Okay, so hello everyone. This is a tutorial for beginners. This is to explain about the actual solidify modifier and the solidify tool. There is a difference between the two of them, although they do uh, have the exact same purpose. A lot of new Blender people don't know that mesh is actually one-sided, and that's because by default, you can see both sides of the mesh. Uh, you can check to find out what side is what, what's front and what's back, or even confirm that this is invisible on one side by doing a couple of things. The first one is going into edit mode and deselecting everything. So far, so good. They all look exactly the same. Inside of your um, end panel over here, and again, if that's not showing, hit the N on your keyboard and it'll pop up inside the 3D viewport. When you come to the section that's called shading, and let me just close some of these up so we can find it easier. In the shading section, you will see what's called back face culling. And back face culling will basically show you which side is inv invisible or uh, or inside out, or I shouldn't say inside out, what side actually has no texture to it. You can see right through it. So this is the back side. This is the side that will be invisible inside of Second Life. If you're wondering why you can see some of this mesh here, that's simply where the front of it is being shown through the curves and stuff of the back of it. Okay, so how do we fix this? There's a couple of ways. Um, let's just say, first of all, your mesh came in world invisible. And you're not sure why, because it looks like the mesh is there. It just looks strange. Well, go ahead and put all of it into edit mode. So, uh, and then A to select all. And this time, inside of the display, um, actually the mesh display settings, twirl that open and you're going to see what's called normals. Go ahead and click on the faces normal. It's the third one. And you can increase and decrease the size of them, but usually 0.1 is good. And watch what happens. They come out the front of the mesh. They do not come out the back. It kind of looks like it is just again because the way that the curtains are twirling uh, or folding. Which also brings to mind another point. This normal doesn't just come out and face some global direction like, you know, north, south, east, and west or along an actual axis. It points the actual direction that the face is pointing. So this face right here happens to be pointing in this direction. The one next to it is pointing straight towards the camera in front view. So they actually come in facing different directions um, are displayed showing uh, the direction of the face. Okay, so now let's say that you are here and you brought your mesh in, but this part of it is invisible. Well, actually, let me do it the right way. So let's just say that these few faces are invisible. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn them that way. Okay, so here I am, and these faces, as you can see, somehow got flipped around. The normal's actually going out the back. So in Second Life, this would look horrible because you'd have this part invisible. What you can do is select the faces. To go into face select mode, you can do that one of two ways. The first is down here by check marking this box. When you hover over it, it will say Vertex Select Mode. Or, in Edit Mode, you can hit Control Tab, and you get a Mesh Select Mode menu. Simply click on Faces, and now every face will have a square dot in the center of it. Select those actual um, ones that are turned the wrong way, and hit Control plus N. Whoops. Let me reselect those. Control N did not work. 
I do not know why my control N didn't work, but that's okay. Because what can happen now is I can show you the next way to do it. And here we have shading and UVs tab. Click on that. And you see normals. And you can flip the direction on them. So they flipped around. I'm sure someone will leave me a comment as to why my control N didn't work. Um, I'm sure maybe I must have hit something wrong. Because there, it just worked for me. I hit control N. And I guess it's not going to flip them back for me. I would probably have to reselect them again, maybe. Nope. I guess you can only use control on N those N on those one time. And I had used control N to flip them inside out to give you this example. Okay, so now we at least have our normals facing the right way and we know what the front is and what the back is. So what happens if you have this curtain in front of a window? Well, from inside the house, it looks great. When you're looking into the house through the window, you're not going to see any curtain at all. So what you can do is use a cute little modifier, or a handy one, uh, called Solidify. The Solidify works on the actual object and not on the mesh cage, so you don't have to have anything selected. You go to the Modifiers tab, which up here in the Properties window is this wrench icon. You're going to get this modifier, Add Modifier Bar. Click on that, and in the Generate section, look for Solidify. When you click on this, you will instantly get a backing to the mesh. What Blender has done has taken each and every one of the faces, mirrored it, and has it now on the back. So this is actually exactly, well, you would think it was exactly double the geometry that it was before, but it's not. Because along with a back, let me see if I can cam in here, you'll see that Blender also put a side onto it. It closed up the holes between the front of the mesh and the newly made back of the mesh. So this geometry is more than double of what it was. Um, this thickness can be adjusted depending on um, how thick you want your fabric to appear. So something thicker might be like leather or denim or even wool whereas maybe cotton or satin or silk would be thinner. And so you can actually uh, choose the thickness setting here. Let me open that. And you can click the setting down. Now you don't really want to go lower than uh, 0.2. Point 0.1 is almost too thin. And what can happen is if you have a lot of bends and turns and stuff, and you make this too thin, then the mirrored back faces can sometimes come through the front faces. So, um, like, of the, of the ones next to it. So let me go ahead and... Do you see down here it's just way too thin? And here one looks like it's actually coming through another one. And again, if you go too high, it can be way too puffy. And again, because when you have bends and turns and such the um, mesh can actually overlap and pop through the rest. So when you're doing this, make sure that you come in here and you get a nice close look up uh, or look at all of the mesh and see the way that uh, the solidify is affecting the appearance of the geometry. Okay, so now let's say you've got your curtain and you're looking at it from um, outside the window. That's great. But the window only covers this portion of the curtain. You know, you can only see this much of the curtain through the window. So this side and the this side really don't have to be solidified. They don't have to be solid. Why make them solid and add that geometry if you don't have to, right? So um, we can use another tool. Since the modifier works on the entire object, and that's what we decided we don't want. Let's just go ahead and hit this little X and X out of that modifier 
and it will all go away. What we have is a cool little tool called Solidify, and this Solidify actually works on the cage. So you have to select what it is that you want to um, have solid. So we only need this center solid, right? So somewhere around the middle, let me go ahead and see what my control plus does here. So I'm just going to select maybe that much of the center. And then there's no button for it, but if you click on your space bar and type in solidify, you'll see it pop up here in the drop down. So click that. And now just these are solidified and not those. And you can turn it around and see that this looks exactly the same. You can also see that that setting seems to be way too thin, but I don't think so. When we get in there nice and close, it seems okay. But I am going to come over here in the operators panel, and we do have this same thickness setting that we had in the modifier. So let's go ahead and click on that a little bit. And maybe, let's see. Ah, that looks a little thick even. Let's go back down. There, that looks good, I think. Not that anybody will see that edge from the outside of the building, but you'll see it from the inside of the house. Okay, so with that said and done, there is your Solidify modifier in action, and, there, uh, and then delete it, right? And Solidify tool used. Um, if you're going to use Solidify on something, I would suggest unwrapping it first because once you unwrap this curtain or whatever it is and then you use the solidify on it, it also copies that um, unwrapping onto the newly made mesh that's getting put on the back here. And that keeps you from having to unwrap both sides. Um, when it's unwrapped in the um, normal way, you know, where it's mirrored from the front one, uh, it will have the same texture information as the front side of it, so it literally looks like it's the back of that fabric. And um, yeah, so that's it. The only thing I think I forgot to mention is that if you do use the Solidify modifier, make sure that when you're done with it, you either apply it in object mode or in your export panel the operators panel and the export, um, make sure you click on apply modifiers uh, so that those are applied. Because if you don't do that, when you bring um, an object in a world that has a modifier that wasn't applied, SL will see it as if the modifier was never done to it. So, happy solidifying.